last summer when I needed to get GeoMesa running and I was trying to get all that crap compiled and it was a pain, it wasn't working and somebody had actually built GeoMesa with Docker on it, with do inside Docker and I was like, oh look, I can just get my stuff done. So I was very impressed. I ended up working for Docker and basically joined them about two months ago and I'm with the developer relations team. So when I submitted this, I was not, you know, this isn't a cell about Docker, this is just using geospatial tools with Docker. Um, but I have a secret agenda, okay? Can't tell anybody. Close the door, come on, close the door. We have a secret agenda here, okay? Because this is what we're actually gonna talk about, okay? <laughs> Making Geo great again, yes, yes. This is what we're doing. We're gonna win. This is all about winning with Geo, all right? So, let's get the Let's get the stupid stuff out of the way, the hard stuff, okay? So we're gonna talk about Docker, so what is it? And you go look this up, and it says, it's an open source project to pack, ship, and run any application as lightweight container, and it's just gobbledygook. You don't know what, what is that? What does that actually mean? So we're gonna talk a little bit. We're gonna give some terms and definitions. You're gonna have to walk this road with me, okay? This is not easy, I know, but it's kind of boring, but it helps with the understanding. So. We're we'll talking first about Docker files. So Docker files is just configuration instructions. Kind of like YAML, if you ever use YAML, that kind of stuff. Um, first thing actually, everybody's a little bit familiar with being on Linux, a little bit with Git. So it's not a lot, just a little, just enough to be dangerous, okay? So just you can break stuff. So, but the Docker file is the basic thing that tells you what how to build the next thing, which is an image, which is all the pieces of um, what we call a container. So this is just a chunk of software um, that sits somewhere, but then there's this thing called a container, and that's what happens when you take an image and run it inside Docker. All of a sudden, this thing comes alive and you can do things, okay? And that piece of software that lets you do things with containers is the Docker engine, and that is what you install onto your machine, whether it's OS X, Windows, Linux, in the cloud, anywhere else. And finally, you can build lots of different images that do different useful stuff, okay? So you wanna put them somewhere, we have a registry called Docker, we call it hub.docker.com or Docker Hub. And we put those images down and people can build them, share them, and distribute them from there. So a quick thing about virtual machines versus containers, and um, one of my colleagues has an analogy I kind of like, and so virtual machines are essentially like houses. Um, they're like single family housing. Everything has its own infrastructure. It has its own water, sewer, um, power, that kind of thing. Though actually, if you look at this diagram, it looks more like townhomes. Um, but containers are different, and they're much more like apartments, where we have a shared infrastructure um, where everything is run. So you, when you look at containers versus virtual machines, containers, you, tend, you wanna think of them as an application delivery technology. They're actually just another piece of software, like if you want to fire up Word, or if you want to fire up QGIS, or you want to fire up something, think of them as processes. They're not actual virtual machines. Um, one of the beauties of this thing is you can run multiple containers on that same infrastructure. So you'll have multiple images or containers running with different tools, so you can build out different systems. So if you want Postgres or PostGIS running on, in one container because it has some sort of feature that you want because it's just dedicated to being a routing engine versus being a PostGIS or Postgres database with, um, I don't know, other types of customer data, you can have that. So you can have multiple things running at the same time. And the great thing about um, containers is the infrastructure can be you know, a notebook, which I always do, a server, or any cloud instance. So all these things are really boring because I hate showing code, but what I ask you to do is if you download the slides, um, it's on the Phosphor-G site under, under the name of this title, and just go ahead and install Docker. And you can do it on, like I said, Linux, Cloud, OS X, Windows. And um, when you install, you'll see, if you install in, uh, in OS X, you'll see this little symbol there and you can fire it up and you'll have a big terminal that blinks at you and tells you you have to do something, okay? Um, we actually have a beta program which removes many of the constraints um, in some of the, the current version. And I strongly encourage you, if you wanna play with Docker, go ahead and go to the beta site sign up for the beta, you'll get a key and you'll be able to download it, and it is a much nicer experience overall than the current one, which is a little bit more uh, command line um, in the way it's, it's built. So, you know, you downloaded this thing, 
you've got apps, you've downloaded images, and you're like, uh, now what? What am I going to do with this thing? So, you know, we're going to keep on doing stuff. So we're going to take a pre-built image, um, Goodle, which is the proper way to say it, because Frank told me that is the way to say it, um, not GDAL, okay? So at Goodle, we're going to download this one, and you can do, pull it down from Docker Hub and then say Docker run geodata Goodle. And what does it do? I mean, is it anything exciting? No. What it does is it looks on your, it looks on your local machine where you've installed Docker machine and it says, hey, you don't have it from here. So we're just going to pull it down from the web or from the registry. And so it pulls down. The size of these files on this particular one is about 188 megabytes, which is kind of on the large side. The newer stuff that's built on Alpine Linux can be as low as five megabytes. So we're very small, very compact. And with this particular um, image, basically all it does is pulls it down, and once it pulls it down, it just does a Google info to show you that it's running. Not very exciting. So the kind of cool thing about what they've done on this particular site is they've given you the link on GitHub on how they built this. So they give you the Docker file, and you can build it. So you can say, Docker, build this thing, geodata, pull it off from GitHub, you know, from and then it'll run. So that's kind of cool, but you know, I can go to, as an OSX user, I can go to the King Chaos site. Anybody know who King Chaos is? <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I'm like, mean like in real life? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've been downloading this stuff for years from him, and I, he's got this Tarzan quote, this kind of crazy Tarzan quote, and I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> that guy. So anyway, yeah, he's uh, the Bitcoin guy. So anyway, you, you can do the same thing. It's like, oh, okay, I've got a binary that runs particularly for my machine. But so it's like, that's kind of cool, but let's do something useful, and we're going to go through a process of taking some Landsat, and we're going to pan sharpen it and um, create a true color image and all that kind of stuff. So um, we're, but the thing is, I'm a super lazy person. I don't like doing work all that much, so I tend to like just borrow everybody else's stuff. Hence, I've borrowed somebody's Google Docker um, implementation. I've, I'm downloading their image. And we're going to use a couple of things. There's a Dan's Google scripts, which builds that has a bunch of Landsat tools in there. And we're going to make all these, add all these tools to the file to make it extra, extra fancy, just like Ketchup. So the, the basic um, you know, chunk of this stuff is here in terms of code. Sorry, I don't have a pointer. Um, you know, this is where it installs, basically, Google. So we're going to just modify it, really simply, and, um, but we're going to use this GitHub workflow, and so we're going to fork it, so we're going to fork it over from um, GitHub, pull down the, the whole project, and then we're going to clone it locally, and then we're just going to edit that Docker file. And so the only thing we're going to really do is do two things. It's, here's this where it originally was. We're just going to go ahead and tell it to install Dan's Google scripts, which has all the cool, um, cool stuff for processing land, um, Landsat, and then we're going to throw some image magic to do some, um, a little bit more image processing. So it, it runs fairly, you know, so it'll look better, actually. So um, once we've done that and edited it, we're just going to do the same Git workflow. We're going to add this file back up. Then we're going to commit it. And then we're going to push it back up to GitHub. So it's all up there. OK. So then we're going to build this thing. So again, we run Docker build, except I create my own version, which is Sparrow local. Sparrow happens to be my Twitter um, handle. And again, it's pretty damn boring. So let's do something far more interesting, which um, it's one of the things is like you see a lot of uh, scripts for doing pan sharpening Landsat 8. So I'm just using this example. So I just did a quick search on Google, uh, on, for, on GitHub, and said, hey, I want to do some Landsat stuff. So this guy's written a really nice little script, uses Google, uses a little image magic. Um, basically, you run. Run the script. Tell them what. Um, tell them where that. Um, where that stuff. Tell them where the uh, files are. And so you know we're going to run that, and we change the script to use um, to use the container, which actually isn't that big of a deal. So you know instead of running Google, we're saying will you send the commands to the Docker engine? Say this is Docker run. We're telling them where the data is. Then we're going to tell it, use this particular container or image, and then we're going to give it all the Google. Um, all the Google commands. So we're going to warp it. We're going to do a contrast stretch on that. Then we're going to merge it and then um, put it put it all together into an RGB. And then, then we're going to run a little through image magic to go and brighten things up because, again, the digital numbers on that stuff tend to be a little bit on the dark side. Okay. 
So um, we want to test how this thing looks, and this I call it extra fancy. It's a, it's a little tool, and so um, I went. There's a site NASA has how to make a true color Landsat 8 image, and basically they go through how do you use uh, Photoshop to do that. So it's a manual process, and so what they've done on the right on the right hand side is the reference. That's their thing that they used. Um, where they manually adjusted the colors, and these are the extra fancy tool that um, wrote that um, that um, that you know that we did with the image to go run through that. And um, I don't know, you, you guys can tell me which looks better or which ones you like, but it's really pretty easy. Um, the script I just changed it to name Pan Sharpen, gave it the name of the um, the the of the Landsat file, pulled all those files together, and ran through there and um, just created that. So I mean, if you actually look the Look at the. So this is the actual Im full image that it ran, and it runs in my, my machine in a couple of minutes. Not particularly, uh, you know, onerous. Which, I mean, it used to be take a lot of horsepower to process Landsat. Um, now this runs in a couple of minutes just to do the pan sharpening plus um, creating the RGB image too as well. And that's a zoom in area over here. So um, what have we really done? So one of the things is we, we try to do as little work as possible, because this is what makes America great. Um, <laughs> we're leveraging the work of what everybody else is using by using an existing container, using their scripts. Um, this is all FOSS software, Docker included, and we're leveraging that. And we're just adding more capabilities. So what we've done is we've created a single purpose tool that can be deployed and used anywhere. So you can actually download this, you know, Google extra fancy thing that I built and run that process over. You can use it to script things. Um, and so instead of having multiple processes or multiple steps to get the same thing done, you know, we've built this one tool that just runs and you can just feed it, you know, Landsat images all day and it'll do that. You know, if you want to stitch it, we can do that too as well. So when you go up to Docker Hub and you start looking, well, what kind of geospatial stuff there? So this is just a list that I just, you know, a couple of, like maybe about 30 minutes of searching around on Docker Hub to see what people have built. And so QGIS is available, GeoServer, all the map servers, GeoGig, a lot of the boundless stuff is up there. Um, CCAN, um, Ubuntu GIS, you got Elasticsearch, all the NoSQL stuff. Um, Cesium is up there, the train server, Geo Network, um, a lot of the same tools that you might be using, Shapely or Fiona. Again, Geo Mesa is up there. Found Open Drone Map is up there too as well, and um, learned about Geo Docker Cluster, which actually isn't up there in the registry, but is actually on GitHub, which is another interesting place to search for um, for Docker files to build. So um, yeah, you get a lot of this, and these things are instead of having to compile and build specifically for your system, you can just pull these. Im you can build your own image and put them up, or pull down somebody else's image and go ahead and run those instead, and it'll run on any machine. So all the dependencies and everything, all the libraries that you have to you know, go through to building these systems, it, it does away with that whole process, which is what is just great about Docker. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build more open source, and we're gonna make industry pay for it, which is actually what we're doing these days. I mean, I mean isn't that what we do, the beekeeper honey paradigm where you know, we write open source software and industry's like, okay, we'll pay you to keep writing that, keep PA to keep on building these things. So we're taking this, taking open source level, or open source at the geoprocessing level, we're wrapping it up and making it much more available and easier to distribute, disseminate, and build into actual systems. We're, we're, create, we're turning them into Legos, essentially. So I want to thank you all, that's what I have. I was actually gonna overachieve and do some vector stuff, but I think um, Steve is going to be doing that with um, Postgres and PostGIS, and um, I'll take any questions. No questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. No, you do not. Um, it, Okay, I'm not 
though I'm in developer relations, I am not certainly not an expert in Docker or, um, uh, or containers, but um, they, my understanding is they run in an area uh, called user space, and those are dynamically allocated as necessary. Yes? Yes, you are. But, I mean, yeah, it's, 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 but the size of that tool can vary anywhere from five megabytes to 200 megabytes. So it's not the same type of constraints. Sure, yeah, go ahead. So the, but the other thing is it also depends on what you hook out on your base layer. So one of the great things about Docker images is they're layered. And so if you, let's say you're a geospatial team, you can all say that our base layer includes CentOS or Ubuntu or whatever, then it's got the Google libraries already built into that base layer, and then everybody's building stuff off top of that. Docker's smart enough to know, oh yeah, all those layers, I can use those, and so when you download yours, it just downloads the pieces if it's, once it's downloaded at one, yeah. to one person, it doesn't da re-download all those other pieces if you're sharing common base layers. Anyone else? Okay, well, thank you. Ha <laughs> ha.